Ooh. Hello there, people of the universe. My name is Mike Spy, and welcome back to another horror movie review. Now, before we carry on with the Saw franchise, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. We're not reviewing nine, and Saw X is coming out relatively soon, so we will hopefully get through all of them in time for Saw X. But before then. We're going to be reviewing Smile, which is a film that came out last year. It was directed by Parker Finn. And the synopsis... I actually want to read you the synopsis. After witnessing a bizarre traumatic incident involving a patient, Dr. Rose Cotter starts experiencing frightening occurrences that she can't explain. As an overwhelming terror begins taking over her life, Rose must confront her troubled past in order to survive and escape her horrifying new reality. Right off the bat, you know how I've said in my Paranormal Activity 1 review and I think Soul 1 and 2's videos that when it comes to horror films, I have got high standards. It's why I... Spoilers. It's why I don't like Scream or the original Halloween. Uh, but with Smile, I was really, really surprised in how good this film was. The premise behind the that creepy as fuck like smile. Like it's amazing how well this film or how well horror films in general can take something as innocent as a smile or a baby crying or a baby's laughter and they can make it demonic as all hell. I love that kind of stuff. I've got letterbox open on my screen and I'm just seeing her in the in the corner of my peripheral. It's not that she's got an ugly smile, it's now that it's a ta it, it, oh, it's something about an unapologetic smile. It's it's creepy, and this film does such a good job. My favorite thing this film does, and it's something horror films don't do often. But if it if a horror film ever does do this, it will already get praise from me, and that's basically when I because we were watching it, me, Callum, and Ben, we were watching it on Discord. I had my headphones on, lights off, totally immersed. But there's, there's one moment where I turned the volume down, took one of my headphones, one of my ear, like one side of my headphones off, and I leaned back so much so that I opened another tab on my second monitor uh, just to brighten up my room slightly because it was making me feel really <laughs> uncomfortable. It got so bad that... No, it wasn't that I opened another tab. I came out of full screen on the website where we were watching the film. So, like, the bright whiteness of Chrome blinded Ben so much so that he said it felt like I was flashbanging him. So that was, that was funny, but that's what I mean. I was trying to distract myself with laughter and blinding Ben because... The moments in this film where the tension, where it allowed itself to rely solely on its tension building, it's it's so good. And it's not just the tension building to the eventual loud jump scare. Not even that, because my favourite moment in this film, it doesn't do that. There is a scare, but it's not just a sudden, ah! No, it's it's more... I'll explain it more in the spoiler section, but it's just done so well where, in many ways for me, horror films, less is more and truly brilliant. And as the supernatural elements go, far the being, the curse, the source of the problem, as that goes, it's not perfect and i'll truly get into my issues with the film in the spoiler section um but to explain my issues non-spoiler i'll just say the ending but back on topic for the most part the premise and the idea behind the curse of the smile we'll call it that it is quite creative it's not a new thing in horror films where Oh, someone's cursed and they've got to spend the run time trying to get rid of it. Maybe they end up dying, maybe they don't. Like, stuff like that. That's nothing new. But I do appreciate that this film tries. Doesn't necessarily succeed, but it tries to do something new. And while the acting is, at points, very, very not good, um, for the most part, the actress who plays Rose... She does do a brilliant job. She is brilliant. The worst actor, and I don't, I don't want to say that, but he, he wasn't very good. The less than brilliant actor in this film is Rosa's husband, which reminds me of Paranormal Activity. Katie was the best part, and Mika was an arse, although 
he he did do a good job being the arse, but anyway, back on topic. So yeah, besides hokey acting at points and not very good ending, overall the film is very good. So let's get into spoilers. Timestamp here. You know how this works. Skip to that if you want to get to my rating. So my problem with before before we fully elaborate into spoilers, I will I do want to say again. The moments where this film shines is its tension. There were moments where I was scared. And there was one jump scare, spoilers, where Rose is listening on the headphones and there's a sudden loud noise. Now, oh, sudden loud noise. Oh, typical. No, 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 no. It's the way it does it. The scare doesn't come from the... Duh! It's more the moment when she's listening. Because it's while part of your brain is like, go on, do the loud noise, it's more... The fear comes from, what is she going to hear? A voice, a language in reverse, something like that. And I really do like that. However, the ending, I really, really hated. The fact, I, I the, the design of the creature, the demon, whatever it is, it's... It's gross looking in the sense of that it's bad. It's not unsettling to look at, which would be effective. It's more just gross for the sake of being gross. And it just, it it was definitely creative, but there wasn't much intelligence behind its creativeness, if that makes sense. And for the, for the plot of the film, that there's the, the, the third act slash resolution is she goes back to her childhood home where her mother, I think, overdosed on drugs or she killed herself, I'm not too sure. But basically, she has to confront her past and confront her demons, confront her depression, all that stuff. In many ways, the film is an allegory for... I think allegory is the right word. It's a metaphor for facing your demons. Now, the reason I hate the ending is because there is a sequence where she defeats it. It takes on the form of her mother which is the source of her trauma, and she she fights, she accepts the loss of what happened, she accepts that she shouldn't blame herself for being able to not stop it because she was a child at the time, so how is that fair? And she does beat it, but then it's revealed, no, she didn't beat it, she's still in her old house, and instead of trying again, she more or less gives up, gives in, and then the film ends with her being possessed by the demon. Which, by the way, it crawls into her fucking mouth. Like, it's such a weird visual. And then her friend, ex-boyfriend, potential new boyfriend. Because um, the husband, he's not supportive. He thinks she's going mad. Paranormal activity. Um, the new boyfriend, old boy, he comes in. He was surprisingly likeable. Um, he comes in, sees her back to the... With her back to him... She turns around, she's smiling, she's clearly possessed, and she sets herself on fire by pouring gasoline and then a match, and then the closing frame is his eye with the reflection of what he's seen, because the way the demon passes over is someone has to witness a traumatic incident. It started by Rose witnessing her patient, who is the lady in the poster, cutting her face off with a knife, Joker Dark Knight style, and that's how it's passed on, because you witness a traumatic event. The part of me thinks... Because this, this character knows about all this. He's actually listened to her. When he witnesses this, turn around. Because then you've not witnessed it. But then again, you know what's happening. So maybe that's enough. But the reason I have a problem with the ending isn't that it pretends that she's beaten it. And then, oh, no, turns out you're still there. No, it's more... Since the allegory metaphor... I'm still not sure if allegory is the right word. I think it is. Since the message of the film has strong themes of depression and battling your demons. I don't like how the film gives me the vibe of there's no point battling your demons, just succumb to them. Now, I'm not saying horror films should be a happy ending or they should be positive messages for mental health. I'm not saying that. But if a film is going to have those themes, it, it should have a happy ending or a happier ending because I really like the notion of her beating, I thought it was like, yeah, come on, it was, a, it was a success, and I loved that, and then when it cut back, I was like, oh, for fuck's sake, and it, it, it really annoyed me, Ben actually preferred that, he would have hated it if she had beaten it, and that's fair enough, and I'd love to know what you guys think if you've seen this film, but for me, 
I just, I didn't like it. I thought that if you are, like I say, you don't have to have a happy ending, but if you are going to deal with those themes, you should, it, it, as much as I do have a lot of praise for this film, the ending, it, it kind of solidifies my belief, if that's the word, where a film can be great, but if the ending's dog shit, it can really pull it back, which that's another thing. I'd love to know your guys' opinion on that. Can a good film be ruined by a bad ending? Or can a bad film be saved by a good ending? I'd love to know your guys' thoughts on all of that. But yeah, as much as I can rant about the ending and the slight rant about the little bit of hokey acting, the fact that it made me do that that is where I sing its praise the most because horror films nowadays can't do that. I'm usually just like, come on, do the jump scare. There, there it is. I knew that was coming a mile away. But with this, I was like, oh, what are you going to do? What are you going to do? Or are you going to do anything? And I, I, I love that. Overall, I rate this film 2.5 stars. If you remember in my prior reviews, I might do a video at some point explaining my rating system. But three in the middle is... Good film, would watch it again, and then four and five, or three and a half, four, four and a half, five. Anything above three means it's spectacular, it's amazing, and it's gone above and beyond. But three is, yeah, brilliant film, would get it on Blu-ray, would watch it again. So that's why Smile, for me, two and a half. So it's just under three, just, if I had to be really specific, I'd say 2.8. So it's nearly three stars, but for me, the ending, it really fucking annoyed me. But yeah, if you guys have seen Smile, what do you think? If you haven't, I would really recommend it. Because maybe you guys aren't bothered about the ending. Or if you are, maybe it won't ruin it for you. I'm not sure. But yeah, I'd love to know your guys' thoughts on everything I've said. Thank you for watching. Take care. Be kind. Be good to one another. And I'll see you soon. Bye. I'm a living legend. You ain't heard yet, you not get the message. From the moment that I'm stepping in, I get a couple weapons. Yeah, I turn to a beast when I'm repping. I'm a living legend.